Welcome to another Hoopo video. Today we're going to be doing a, a quick paper review of Math Prompter. This is a mathematical reasoning using large language models. This is a paper coming out of Microsoft Research in Redmond and uh, came out a little bit earlier in this week. So we're going to be doing a quick reading, which means we're mostly going to be looking at the abstract and some of the figures, and we may not necessarily get everything right, but we're going to hope to do this in a short amount of time. Let's get to it. Large language models have limited performance when solving arithmetic reasoning tasks and often provide incorrect answers. That's right, LLMs will confidently give you the wrong answer, so it's very tricky to know whether or not they actually understand the math. Under like, unlike natural language understanding, math problems typically have a single correct answer, making the task of generating accurate solutions more challenging for LLMs. To the best of our knowledge, we are not aware of any LLMs that indicate their level of confidence in their responses, which fuels a trust deficit in these models impending their adoption. Uh, so LLMs do have uh, a level of confidence, except the confidence is at the level of the word. So LLMs are outputting a probability distribution over every possible word token, and they basically generate a response token by token. So they might not have a confidence score for the final answer that they output, but they do have a confidence score in the actual individual words that they output. It's just very difficult to go from that individual token level confidence into something that represents a confidence for the whole answer. Uh, to address this deficiency, we propose Math Prompter, a technique that improves the performance of LLMs on arithmetic problems along with increased resilience in the predictions. Okay, so they're this is their technique. We'll see what they mean by technique there. Math prompter uses zero shot chain of thought prompting technique. Okay, so this is a prompting technique. So it falls within kind of the school of prompt engineering where you're basically uh, designing a specific prompt that you feed to the uh, large language model. And with that prompt, also sometimes called the context, it can basically answer questions. Uh, zero shot refers to the fact that there's no additional fine tuning. This is an LLM that is just taken and it's just zero shot, zero as in the zeroth time, the zero index. Sometimes programming languages, they don't start at one. A lot of them start at zero. So you could think of zero shot as the first time. You're just taking the first shot on goal, uh, except it's zero index, so zero shot. No fine tuning. Out of the box. Chain of thought. Uh, I suppose this is an adjective to describe the type of technique. My guess is this is some kind of in-context learning style thing. To generate multiple algebraic, algebraic expressions or Python functions to solve the same math problem in a different way and thereby raise the confidence level in the output results. Okay. I mean, I think they just said that they didn't have a way to indicate confidence level, so maybe they're suggesting that they figure out a way to output a confidence level. This is in contrast to other prompt-based caught methods. There is no check on the validity of the intermediate steps followed. Our technique improves over the state of the art on the multi-arth data set. Okay, so this is some kind of benchmark, multi-arith, so arithmetic benchmark for LLMs probably. And they do see a huge performance gap or a huge performance improvement here from 78% on this benchmark to about 92% on this benchmark. And the uh, LLM that they use is a 175 billion parameter GPT based LLM. Probably GPT 3.5 if I had to guess based on the date, but uh, the fact that they don't mention which one it is, perhaps it is one of the uh, newer ones. Maybe this might even be GPT-4. All right, so introduction, introduction. Let's skip that. Let's go straight into figure one, the math prompter flow. This is the process. So we have a question here, an input query. At a restaurant, each adult meal costs $5, blah, blah, blah. I have a group of 15. So kind of a simple arithmetic question. And then... They have, I guess, four parts here. So part one, part two, part three, and part four. So in part one, you have at a restaurant, each meal costs A, and kids eat free of a group of 
eat people came in and C were kids, how much would it cost the group to eat? Okay, so they basically replaced all the numbers with variables and then they provide this kind of dictionary here, uh, what they call a map. So uh, in Python, map maps are basically called dictionaries, but the idea is that you have a uh, structure that has basically keys that correspond to specific uh, values. And here the keys are variables or these capital letters and then the values are individual numbers. Okay, so once you have that algebraic template, then you have a math prompt, write a mathematical equation and generate the answer format starting with answer equals. Okay, so this is a little bit of kind of prompt engineering here. And then a Python prompt, write a Python function that returns the answer. Okay, so one thing to note is that a lot of these LLMs have seen a lot of basically these leet code, these kind of like brain teaser problems that they ask in a lot of programming interviews. And those are a very good data set and very good uh, kind of part of the training data, a, a specific subset of the training data that you that's very useful for this kind of algebraic problem, right? There's a lot in common with programming puzzles and algebraic questions such as these. So in a sense, uh, using something uh, like write a Python function in your prompt will, will put the LLM kind of in the correct area of space that it needs to be, right? It'll put it in the right mindset to solve a problem such as this. So I'm guessing they feed both of these individually, so maybe two different kind of inferences here. There's one where you feed it this, one where you feed it this. And of course, if you feed it this algebraic prompt, it'll give you something like this which is kind of almost like pseudocode. And then if you don't feed it, if you feed it the Python stuff, it'll give you this little Python function here, total price, which takes three variables and returns that. Okay, step three, compute verification. So eval, there's a evaluation of the little function here. Algebraic answer, Pythonic answer. Okay, and then statistical significance, final answer. Okay, so. I kind of see what's happening here. So basically they're taking a question which is written in natural language, right? Just normal language. They're extracting out the numbers, changing them with variables, and then asking the LLM to basically write a Python function that solves this or a actual, like kind of like a pseudocode function that solves this. And then they're probably basically plugging in these variables and seeing if the functions return the same value. And I guess if you do this with enough different variations, you should be able to see how many of the final answers are consistent and in that way get some measure of statistical significance uh, as to whether the LLM answered it correctly, right? This is the notion of confidence that they were uh, suggesting at in the abstract. And I think this end time here means that it probably does this multiple times. Okay. Table one accuracy on multi arith data set. So we don't know if this is necessarily something that they created for the purposes of this paper, but it might be a little bit older. There might be other people that use this benchmark. Math prompter outperforms all the zero shot and zero shot caught baselines. Okay, so it's basically beating other zero shot uh, attempts. We emphasize that our model's performance is comparable to 540 billion parameter models. Okay, so it's beating bigger models. We saw earlier they said they used 175 billion, so 540 billion is a much larger model. Uh, if not mentioned explicitly, each row consists of 175 billion. Results are borrowed from Kojima and they use blah, blah, blah. So this is the paper that they're comparing to. Uh, Texas Vinci, eight examples. Okay, so let's see here, zero shot. So this is if you just take an LLM as is, 175 billion, you don't do any of this kind of prompt engineering that they're doing here, you ask it these arithmetic questions and it gets it right roughly 17% of the time, which is pretty poor. Uh, this is basically the same thing, but now instead of asking the 175 billion parameter model, you're asking the 540 billion parameter model, so over twice as big, and you can see that accuracy does improve, but it's still not really uh, significant. It's at 25 versus 17, still pretty poor. So zero shot COT, we're not, I'm not exactly sure what COT stands for here. Uh, they probably define it. 
uh, chain of thought prompting technique. So I would call this in context learning. Other, you might call this also prompt engineering, but it's kind of this idea where you're kind of creating these special prompts such that the LLM, it's not fine-tuned on a task, but by uh, having this almost like a curriculum in the prompts where it's like seeing these specific prompts in this order and the prompts are kind of ordered in a specific way such that it leads the LLM in, to answer these questions more correctly. So you could think of COT as roughly prompt engineering, just fuzzy a little bit, but you can see how that's a huge performance gain, right? So you go from zero shot to zero shot COT, you go from 17% to 78% accuracy, so huge performance. And interestingly here, uh, COT with a larger model is actually worse. So the, the larger model actually performs worse than the smaller model. That's actually super interesting to me. Uh, zero shot plus self-consistency. So this is an additional, let's see, self-consistency. Self-consistency improves chain of thought reasoning in language models. So consistency, consistency, consistency. Okay. I'm assuming this is probably a different paper, but it's probably another type of prompt engineering uh, type of technique. The word consistency uh, combined with the word self there maybe implies the this kind of style where you have uh, multiple inferences with slightly different prompts, and then you would want each of those slightly different prompts for the multiple different inferences to return the same answer. That's maybe what it means, but I'm not 100% sure there. And then finally, of course, the final thing on this uh, table here is the zero shot COT with the specific math prompter. So this is this paper especially, and that's 92%. So this obviously beats out all the other ones, and this is only using the 175 billion parameter model. So obviously they're doing well. Uh, a few shot, two samples, eight samples, two samples, eight, four, and eight. So here they're changing the number of samples. I guess if you show it multiple examples in a row, of course, the LLM is going to get a better idea of what exactly it's going to do. So they're showing you the difference between just showing it two examples in a row and eight examples in the row. You see how in the few shot without the COT, without the math prompter, and with the smaller model, it doesn't really necessarily improve that much. But uh, once you have this chain of thought reasoning, going from two to four to eight samples does seem to improve the performance. And then finally, uh, zero shot plus or zero plus few shot. So plus few shot here, I guess, refers to this is no longer zero shot. Zero shot would be the first on the first try, right? Few shot means you try a couple times. So that's how many times they're trying here. They're trying twice. So eight samples, chain of thought, uh, zero shot, and then a few shots after that, you get 92%. So let's see what this actually looks like. At the fair, Adam bought 13 tickets, blah, 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 same kind of thing. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna extract out these numbers and ask it to create an equation, or not an equation, but a Python function. Uh, this is, of course, the mapping, so that's pulling out the numbers. This is the first answer, which is the algebraic, the kind of pseudocode, and then this is the actual Python function. And uh, state of the art, that's what SO, SOTA means, state of the art. And then zero shot chain of thought reasoning. And one unnecessary step error. I guess this is example between current state of the art, state of the art, zero shot, and math prompter. So this is the current state of the art. So if you just ask this question directly into a large language model with a zero shot, right? No, no special context, no special prompt, no special technique. You just put it in there, it's gonna give you the wrong answer. Uh, if you do it the math prompter style, you basically extract the variables, you ask it to make a Python function, you evaluate that Python function, and you get the right answer. Um, cool, and they do provide one example of where it actually makes an error, and here you have 
uh, the same kind of idea. You have Caleb bought 14 boxes of chocolate candy, gave five to his little brother. If each box had six pieces in it, how many pieces did Caleb still have? So you have three numbers. You have 14, 5, and 6. Uh, you want A times C minus B. A, B, C, A times C minus B. Common sense mistake. Uh, okay, I see what the error here is because there's a little bit of ambiguity here, right? If Caleb bought 14 boxes of chocolate candy and gave five to his little bro brother, did he give his brother five boxes or five pieces of candy, right? So, I mean, this seems like something that even a human would be a little bit confused about. So it kind of makes sense that the LLM is going to make a mistake there. But it's interesting that the math prompter gets this wrong versus the uh, zero shot uh, LLM gets it right. So kind of an interesting thing to think about there. Okay. So that's it. Uh, in roughly 15 minutes, we've already gone through this paper. Uh, obviously, we don't, we haven't really gone through it, so we can't really say that we really understand it, but I think we got about 80% of it with 20% of the work. Thanks for listening, and make sure to like and subscribe if you want more quick paper summaries like these.